What could it mean? Small mistake on my part, the premonition actually happens in episode 11. I made a whoops. This being out of sequence doesn't really change much. It's just evidence towards something that we're going to uh, go over very soon. That being said, it's important not to dwell on past mistakes and instead move forward and learn from them. So let's continue. Dad dies immediately after the big game. Fuma. Can you hear me, Father? I'm here. In his last words to Fuma are that Fuma is Kamui's twin star. What could it mean? And now for something completely different. All of this stuff has happened by about episode 8. At the same time as this main plot progressing, you have about 15 other characters running around, all of whom are given screen time and attempts at characterization and their own development. So, while the premise hasn't moved what feels like even inches, other stuff is going on. This is the salaryman of the cast. The salaryman's name is Seitro Aoki. He's a mild-mannered office worker caught up in the 7 vs. 7 deathmatch. I'd like to look into this character with a bit more detail and some examples from the show. Salaryman has a wife and kid who love him very much. See this tie? Oh, that's really nice. Huh? Oh, the tie. Thanks, it was a birthday gift for my wife. Of course, I'm sure it was my daughter Yuka who actually picked it out. It certainly looks great on you, Mr. Aoki. <laughs> One of Salaryman's best friends in the show is actually a young prostitute. I have a wife and a little girl. I should have known. All the good men I run into are either married or gay. They both bond over his love for his wife and child. Interesting, isn't it? And he is a windmaster. What does that mean? He can control wind. The salaryman has been learning to control wind since he was a young boy and has more or less known about the deathmatch for some time now in an unidentified capacity. Salaryman's nephew, Daisuke Saiki, also known as Jobber, is much weaker at controlling the wind and is also Princess Hinoto's bodyguard. Jobber usually stays with the vegetable princess, far underneath the Japanese diet building where they're pretty safe on average, I'd assume. Taking all of this into account, let's move on to the Spider-Man-esque dilemma this character faces. His wife and child do not have wind powers and are totally normal people. Seitro wants to keep them safe and not worry about him or what he has to do to save the world. How does he do this? Well, this is far after episode 8 and is definitely a spoiler, but we're not going to talk about it again, so I'm just going to come out with it. Salaryman divorces his wife secretly and tries to sacrifice himself to save the young prostitute. A few more points just to add a little bit of spice to this recipe. We never actually meet his family. Not even a small two-minute scene or a coming home from work moment. They're only ever talked about in minor detail, and the detail is that he loves them very much. That's it. There is no rule that he has to keep his powers a secret from them. Ever. In the show. It's never mentioned. Divorcing his wife and ghosting his family does not protect them. Not realistically. Not logically by any stretch of the, like, how... Bro, what, it doesn't make any sense. Why not just put them into protection with the princess who is hiding underneath Japanese diet building with several bodyguards, where she has remained safe for several years now. Not a perfect solution, but safer than just the divorce option. Moving on, let's see the conclusion to all of this, which happens in episode 21. Once again, far, far beyond episode 8, but this is my example as to... Uh, Thanks, it was a birthday gift for my wife. The build-up to this is sprinkled about the prior 21 episodes, and it ends with Karen sacrificing herself to kill the hotter, evil, but not exactly evil, pimp salaryman, this guy. Hey, don't mind me. <laughs> what are you doing? Too late. It's over. normal salaryman is forced to watch as he is being subdued by the robot girl who was in love with pimp salaryman. Salaryman makes it out because the robot girl's robot was jealous of pimp salaryman and, and, and kills her. I'm so glad. I help such a wonderful husband and father see his family once again. You are a wonderful woman. Oh, thank you. 
I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to protect you. Satsuki, we can't kill human beings because it makes other human beings sad. Was I right? Well, none of that matters anymore. I wanted to come back for tea, but I don't think I can join you tonight. What a shame. Hey, buddy! What the heck are you doing up there? Hey, don't mind me. I'm just out taking a little walk, enjoying the night air. Ah, a walk, huh? Most people don't take walks up a 50-foot tree. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the point of any of this all was. It feels completely disconnected from what's going on with Kamui and the main... Like, once again, this is a 7v7 deathmatch. And everything just feels completely disconnected. What is the point of all these characters? Why not just have Kamui fucking fight other Kamui? It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't get it. Maybe in the actual manga, it's good. It could be. Maybe it is. Who knows? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Whatever. This feels like it's several animes in one. Now, back to the main plot for a minute before I bitch some more and we finish the video. Last time, on episode 8, we are told that Fuma is Kamui's twin star. At the end of that exact same episode, we're told that Hinoto's dream means Kamui has a twin star who has yet to awaken. What could it mean? Kotori and Kamui are attacked by a mysterious sex predator who attacked the good guys before and is one of the bad guys. I'll explain the sex predators later. There, there are three of them in the show. Kamui can't defeat the sex predator because he has to defend Kotori, but suddenly Fuma has super strong magic powers and saves them both. This is immediately followed by a slightly erotic encounter between Fuma and Kamui. See me for what I am. Your twin star. Episode 11. Kamui's aunt gives birth to another sword in front of Kamui and Fuma. Stop it! Now you'll finally believe what I've told you. My sister Toru's death and Saya's death. That was their destiny. As mine is to do what I must do. No, Kamui! This is my destiny. I like the, I like the uniforms, but that's about no, it. No, we, we, no. I, there's a lot of things that I love about him. Kotori wakes up by accident and sees the end result. This reactivates her sword birth PTSD and puts her into a coma. Puts her into a coma. Hurts. Kamui makes the choice to be a good guy after this, and not a bad guy, so he can protect his friends. This activates Fuma. Looks like you've chosen. <laughs> The world as it is, not a revolution. Fuma. You'll be one of the dragons of heaven, one of the seven seals. That's the future you chose. What's wrong with you? If you're going to become a dragon of heaven, then it's my destiny to become a dragon of earth. Huh? What are you... What are you talking about? The two divine swords, the two futures. I am your twin star. Fuma, what the... Ah! <laughs> who sexually assaults Kamui and does a Bible reenactment with his own sister. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say this line seriously. Oh my god. Oh, fuck.
going on? What the hell? Oh my. Kotori! Kamui, I'm begging you. Please be all right. Such a strong voice, Kamui. Have you lost your mind? Do you have any idea what you're doing right now? Of course. The Earth is wishing for a revolution. And neither you nor any other human can prevent that revolution from occurring. I'll become a dragon of Earth, one of the seven angels. I shall kill the dragons of heaven, along with those who have desecrated this planet. There's something wrong with you, Puma. <laughs> this is our destiny. Ah. <laughs> Now it's your turn. <laughs> There's someone inside this girl. Who is it? This girl does not wish for Kamui to die. Dream seer, huh? You're moving her corpse by entering her dream of death. Controlling her dead body. Why are you getting in my way? A dragon of Earth? Answer me! Huh. Kamui, you may have escaped for now, but I will kill you. That's a promise! <laughs> Is this what you wanted? Yes. It was because you had the potential in you to become a dream seer that I was able to cross into your dreams like this. We still have dreams. Even when we are dying. I've known this would happen for a long time, but even if I know the future, I cannot do anything. The one who was so dear to me, and you, I couldn't save either one of you. I know, but Kamui's still alive thanks to you. That's all I really wanted. I knew from what I had seen in my dreams that my big brother and Kamui would try to kill one another. But I knew I couldn't stop them. What awaits Kamui is a sadness beyond death itself. The pain of losing you, and then the pain of fighting and hurting a person he looked up to, respected, and loved. I believe in him, Kakyo. I believe that Kamui will win out in the end, no matter how badly he's hurt. Besides, Kamui's the only one that can save my big brother. Thank you, Kakyo. I guess I should go.
Kyo, if you see my big brother and Kamui, please tell them something. Tell them that I love them both. And also, that the future has not been determined yet. The future has not been determined yet. After this, Fuma ceases to exist and becomes other Kamui. The Illuminati also comes in to assist Kamui by his aunt's request. Just like a lot of the other characters, they, they basically serve no purpose. Let's breathe for a second. By this point, no one has died except Kotori and Dad. Both casts of Seven that are supposed to do battle have been introduced. I've skipped over a lot, but by the time the Illuminati comes in, it's episode 14 about. This is a 7v7 deathmatch for the fate of the world. This is episode 14 of a 24 episode show. Two people who are not involved in the deathmatch have died. What is this? What, what's, go, what's really going on? Let's go over both the good guys and the bad guys so we can really make sure that you understand there are seven people on each side who have done a little bit of fighting and shown their powers a, a little bit, but once again, nothing has happened to any of them. Kamui was in a, a coma because he, he he had to watch a Bible cosplay, but apart from <laughs> apart from that, what is the show? Again, on the good guys, you have Kamui, Kamui. electric guy, salary man, oh the tie, Karen, gay, the only good character, Subaru. I had a thought once. You have a sword user. No one can escape their destiny. And then you have dog user. And the dog is also a sword. How about we go get some ice cream? Huh? What the dog doing? On the bad guys, you have the other Kamui, who is a leather daddy, basically. Such a strong voice, Kamui. You have punch guy. My name is Kusanagi Shiyu. Who's definitely... Sega! Bro looks like he's 43. He's one of the sex predators. That's two sex predators, by the way. You have Pimp Salary Man. Hey! I actually like this character, but what's his, he has no purpose. You have the Cloth Twink, who killed Dad. I am one of the seven angels. Seven angels? That's good. He does something, at least. You have uh, the only good character's groomer, and I mean that sexually. You really are very cute, Subaru. You also have Robot Girl, and then you have another human vegetable who does he prevents other Kamui from killing normal Kamui and kind of, he doesn't do much. I'm reading out this list because I want to, I'm going to strip it down right now and leave out the ones that actually have some plot relevance outside of feeling like they're a mandatory chore. So half. Now how many of these end up dead? Also half in the intersection of the two lists is pretty small. Probably could have cut it down by quite a bit. Probably didn't need to make it a 7v7 deathmatch for the fate of humanity on the final day promised battle. Fucking. <laughs> up to the end of the show, Kamui was not able to make a barrier field. Kamui also goes into the final fight not wanting to kill his best friend who has lost all traces of his former self. Another major plot point is that Fuma is destined to win this battle and is the stronger Kamui. Spoiler. By this point, none of the other characters matter at all. So yeah, the show ends with... This is the end, Kamui. My wish is at the end. And I believe that you'll become strong and be able to overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. Become stronger, Kamui, so that you can protect the ones you love. But in my heart, I believe that you will fulfill your destiny. Kamui, you've got to stop blaming yourself right now. You've got to move forward, even if it's just one step at a time. The dragons of heaven have perished!
clear to me now. I know what I have to do to bring you back. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a hole in the middle of the grapefruit, approximately the size of your man's penis. I am the Kamui of the Dragons of Earth. That's all right. I wanted to protect you and this world that we live in at the same time. But you can't. All you can do is die and then I'll give the world its true wish. I'm not going to die. Because I know that I'll stay alive forever. Here in your heart. My wish has been granted. Kotori is still alive here in my heart. Mother too. And Surata will live forever in Arashi's heart as well as my own. Hinoto, Saiki, and Karen as well. Everyone will live on inside someone else's heart. Entrusting their wishes and dreams to those they leave behind. And I entrust my wish to you, old friend. This is the future that I chose. Right? Mr. Kamui! He protected us. Kamui protected the entire world. <gasps> Inuki! Puma stabbing Kamui through the chest makes him erupt in a barrier field that covers either Japan or the whole world, and Puma returns to normal. And thus the power of friendship has saved everything once again. Lovely. The series is obviously supposed to be a drama, but it's also wrapped in a bow that says Team Deathmatch in addition to a bunch of other defining traits that do not feel like they mix. Things are explained to the absolute tits, but critical information is heavily lacking across the whole product, like the swords. What do the swords even do? Only Kamuis can use them. What else? No idea. Where did they come from? Birth. Humanity is also apparently ruining the planet, which is never really demonstrated. I mean, there is some semblance of a message about the difficulties of human interaction, as this is, once again, clearly a character drama. But that definitely wasn't the connection there and most of the characters feel unrelatable anyway. So, who, what, like, none of the bad guys are eco-terrorists or even really have a reason to be bad guys in the first place. So, the fuck? Like, other Kamui's just, he's, he's just a gay rapist. That's it. And it's not even by, like, by choice. He wasn't raised to be that way. He just suddenly turns evil one day. Like, who is this show for, and why was it given the green light? Why are there so many adaptations to this manga? I've never read. Why are three of the bad guys sex predators? This one is a 33-year-old man who is in love with a 25-year-old. Their love affair started when the 25-year-old was 16, and the two are from another previous clamp manga. This one falls in love with a 16-year-old, but bro looks 40. And then Fuma... Glorible. What's that? Once again, who is this for? I hate it. Now... I say this, but the, the art, the art's kind of fire, probably because it's a clamp, and it's a clamp adaptation, and it's also by Madhouse somehow, and the music is actually all right, uh, and you know, the the voice acting for the English and Japanese dubs are both, both pretty, pretty good, they're, they're okay, they're okay, and you know what, the, the opening and the ending are, are decent too, but 
guess what? I still fucking hate it. 24 goddamn episodes with a ton of just absolutely useless content. I haven't even talked to you about Electric Guy and Sword Girl's romance. But this is how it's built up. Watch this. Yep, I've decided you're the one. Hmm? Of course, none of them can hold a candle to you, Missy. As soon as I saw you, I knew you were the one. Because you are an absolute knockout. That angry look makes you even more beautiful. Missy, I've already decided that you're the one. Huh? Something wrong? Nope, I was just thinking how truly beautiful you are, Missy. I thought you were contacting the leader of the Sumeragi clan in Kyoto right now. Electric guy then almost dies protecting Sword. Sword falls in love with Electric Guy as a result of this and they do the mating ritual. After this, to protect Electric Guy, she joins the Dragons of Earth to kill Kamui. The logic here is profound, and by helping to kill the strongest good guy Electric Guy will be safe because then the world will end and he can't die protecting Kamui or her. Terrible. I have rewritten this goddamn script four times. And the first three were like 14 to 17 pages each because of how much fucking nonsense there is in this show. It's 24 episodes of bullshit. I'm done. This pile of shit gets a 3 out of 10. Whoever bumped it up to a 7 on Mal in IMDb needs mental help. That's the video. Don't watch this. Rage aside, if you had fun watching this, please subscribe, like, and Call me names in the comments below if you feel like I'm wrong to some extent. I release sporadically, but I'm going to try to keep them coming. Good night.